Welcome back. I'm glad to see you for another month. Uh, this month is a lot of fun. It's a technique that I did not show uh, last year on our video. It's called foundation piecing. Now, I, I just heard a group groan from people saying, oh, I hate foundation piecing, and other people are, you know, clapping your hands in glee. Well, the thing is, um, we're going to do both, whichever you prefer. So I'm going to first show you the foundation piecing way, and then we're going to show you how I did it for this quilt by hand um, using templates. So pick your thing if you really don't like foundation piecing, and those of you who have no clue what I'm talking about, I will explain that too. But if you don't like it at all, just wait till the end of this lesson and we'll talk about uh, doing it by hand and I'll show you examples of that as well. So what is foundation piecing? Uh, a lot of new quilters may not know what it is. Basically, it's sewing to a piece of paper and it works mostly if you've got super sharp points or uh, pieces that are really tiny that would be hard to sew and get together. So let me just show you, give you an example. This is the unit we are going to be making this month. Um, there's one piece that's been left blank and that's for a purpose. This is, this is how much we're doing for this particular clue. And we're going to be doing six of these. So you see these little teeny tiny pieces at the, at the center of this and they get a little bit bigger as we go on out. So what happens is the design is on paper. It's printed on paper and that's called a foundation. And interestingly enough, even though you've got all these weird angles and everything, this whole thing is all straight line sewing. So I like to compare it to a log cabin quilt. If you're familiar with the log cabin, very simple. You just sew a piece, then sew the next piece on, the next piece on a straight line sewing. It's kind of like building the logs of a cabin. And that's exactly what we're doing here. It's all straight line sewing, uh, even though it looks complex. Uh, you start with the center, and on most foundations, it would be, let me just get these out of the way for the moment so you can, I can explain it to you. You've got two sets of numbers on these various individual pieces. The F1 means fabric one, and you refer to your fabric chart um, that came with the downloads in that first clue, and it'll tell you the, so which fabric you would start with here. Then F2 is fabric two and three, and so these F numbers mean fabric, your fabric choice. Then there are numbers that are in um, white numbers in a circle. Those indicate the position or the order in which you're going to sew these pieces together. So the very first one in the very center is number one. Then you have next to that is number two is over here. So you start with number one, you have a straight line sewing as you add piece number two. Then you go around the corner here and this way. So we've got piece number two and now we've got piece number three, another straight line sewing and piece number four. You see here's the four, here's the three, two, one. So we're sewing, straight line sewing around that triangle. You keep going, you find out where number five is. Here's number five. So we're going to add that next and then number six will be added and then number seven. And you just have this order as you keep going sewing around. And what that does, you're sewing on this line and as long as you can sew in a straight line following a line you should be able to get this nice and clean and build your foundation. First of all uh, is to sew we have to do six of these and you would sew all six one at the same time sort of in assembly line order. I think this helps you to keep from being confused each time and having to rethink where is the position. You know that this time okay Time number one, I'm going to sew fabric number two along this side. Okay, I sew it on that foundation. Take my next foundation. I'll sew it along that foundation and so forth and so on. And because you want to press it after every time you sew, you press it with the iron, saves you a lot of trips to the iron. If I do the first six seams all at one time, all at one sitting, then I can get up and go to the iron and I can iron all of those. Then I come back and go, okay, position two. And I keep my pieces laid out in order of which they're going to be sewn so you don't get confused either. So you'll be cutting your pieces according to the instructions in the pattern. Um, you're going to be reserving 
part of that fabric for the one of the borders in the quilt. So you follow those directions. It depends on which kit you have. So I'm not going to go over each one of those. It'll be in your pattern instructions and in that download page. Then you organize the fabrics in the order, fabrics one, two, three, four, and so forth along there and you get ready to sew and then you prepare the foundation. Now, so the foundation comes in your pattern with two pages that are like this. So let me explain what those pages are. The foundation is too big to fit on one piece of paper. So you have to extend that and you have to extend this. Well, this little piece right down here at the bottom that says 17, that's adding piece number 17. And right along this dotted line, it says match A. The other piece goes on this side. <clears throat> so you're going to get cut one of these out to go on that side and you'll have the other five for the other five pages that you've already copied. So what you're going to do is cut these out and it's kind of, well it's not kind of, it's exactly like we did when we extended those templates. There's a wide dotted line on here with instructions that say match B regular and you just put that right there and tape it and that'll be your foundation there and then you're going to cut this little piece out and along that wide dotted line you're going to attach it up here and that is going to give you your template or your foundation. Here's that little piece that's added on this side, here's the piece that's added on this side and now we have our foundation and you're going to make six of these. The next stage is we're going to start sewing. Before I pull the sewing machine over, I want to show you this first piece. We actually cut from a template. It's on one of the other template pages. It tells you in your pattern uh, what to cut. And that's going to go in the center. What you can do is you can just, to try to figure out where that center is, you can just fold it. If you can't see through your paper, you just put a card along the edge and do a fold right there. We'll put another card here and put a fold right along the edge of that center triangle. We're going to just do a little, just use like a postcard, the insert from a magazine that asks you for a subscription or whatever. So I've got that and I can kind of, that helps me to get this centered. And again, I'm going to put a, I'll just stick a little dot of glue right in the center to help hold this in place so it doesn't slip on me. And then I'm going to center that kind of over those fold lines. You can kind of tell where these points go into those folds. You've got your seam allowance, enough of it there to fit that space and then stick a pin in there and that will hold it till you're ready for the next part. Now, that is fabric one, position one. The next thing we need is fabric two, which is this green right here, and position two, which is right here. So we're gonna be sewing that. Now, this time we had wrong sides, but now we're gonna put right sides to this. Let me go again, it's this side. So it's this edge that I'm just gonna put the quarter inch, I mean, line up the edge right there. I can, uh, take this pin out now and put it through all of this. That's why it helps to put just that little dab of glue. That sew line glue pencil works for that purpose really well. Now we're ready to go to the sewing machine. So I'm going to take a minute to get the sewing machine and the iron set up because we'll have to be ironing each time as well. And I'll be back with you in a second. So we're ready to stitch this. But before I go into starting the actual stitching, I wanted to, um, just insert something about the paper that you use when you're doing foundation piecing. Uh, I've printed out here just regular standard copy paper that would be in my printer because that's what most of you will have. But when I'm doing any foundation piecing or anybody on my staff, they love the Carol Doak foundation piecing and that's what I would use. Uh, it's worth the investment. It's a lightweight paper, uh, it, which means, number one, it tears away really easy when you finish. Uh, it also means you don't have to make 
quite as small a stitch when you're stitching. Typically, with foundation piecing, you would set your machine to a little bit smaller stitch. That also, those extra holes, helps it to tear away more easily. But um, it's a great paper, and it's well worth the investment. Um, if you don't want to make the investment into a paper like Carol Doak, then I recommend you don't use just standard copy paper, but find the cheapest copy and thinnest paper that you can find because it'll make it easier in the long run um, for every aspect of what you're doing. So that said, let's get started with sewing. We've already got this piece in position. Uh, when you start getting longer pieces, you may want two pins or make sure you hold it because we're turning back to this side and we are going to sew on the line that's just before the number two. And I want to really caution you, do not go on the line past the number two because that's the next piece. We're always going on the line just before the number that we're doing. We're going to start the stitching a little bit away, maybe anywhere from a quarter to half an inch because that'll just pull away from the paper later. You'll see as we go. And then just stitch very carefully on the line. And go beyond, again, pull it up, trim, trim, we remove the pin, and go over here to the iron and press that piece open. Now we've just done position number two. So now I'm looking for position three on my paper. I'm going to turn it over. Here's two, here's number three. So I need to fold on the line just before number three. Now this is where it gets interesting, the foundation part, so watch carefully. I'm gonna take just a postcard, any postcard, and I'm going to lay it right along, along that line, and I'm going to fold it over to get a nice even crease. Now you see where this goes, where I've stitched on that? You just give it a yank and tear it. It doesn't matter, the paper's gonna tear away later anyway. But this means, this is where I have to trim, but we have to trim a quarter inch out from where this fold is. This is where this nifty little gadget called an add a quarter ruler comes in handy. It's got a lip on it here, so that lip just butts right up next to that fold in the paper and holds it in place. You see how that just anchors itself in there? And then you just cut along and you cut those pieces off. And now we're going to add piece number three. It, it'll give you the perfect quarter inch for your seam allowance. Make sure that's the right position. There's number three right there. We're along that fold line. This is getting a little long here, so I think I'm going to stick in two pins. Not where we're, the sewing line is going to be, well away from the sewing line, so we're not going on top of our pins. Turn it over, and now we're going to sew along this line that comes just before number three. And I'm going to start again, a few stitches, quarter inch or so before that line that I'm sewing on, which is right before the number three. Go beyond the seam a little bit, pull it out. I'm going to remove the pins. Back to the iron. So that was number three. Now we're looking for number four. So here's number four. So we need to sew along this line. We need to prepare that quarter inch. So once again, I'm going to get my postcard, lay it right along there. Pull this here, pull these pieces, and then we take the add a quarter ruler, butt up next to that edge, cut the pieces, and again, that gives a nice quarter inch that we can now line up our next piece, number four. 
If you want to check to make sure it's in the right position, fold this down where the wide part's going to be and make sure it's going to fit on there. It is easily going to fit in that space. The pieces have been cut pretty generously. So you cut all those pieces out according to the instructions in your clue that you got that you downloaded. Keep them in order. Now I'm going to sew this along that number four line. Go a few stitches beyond. First of all, I'm going to pull these pins out. Press this. Now, we want to find number five, which is here. So you go to the line before the number five, not after. Get your card. You put the card in here. And now that the ruler's in place, you cut and you get your perfect quarter inch seam allowance. And you just keep building this around and around. Let me put in another piece here, which will be one of these. Onto that. Line up the raw edges. Check to make sure that number five piece, and yes, there's plenty of space for that, and down here as well. I'm going to move this down just a little tad. And I put the pins well away from where I'll be stitching, so you're not going to have the trouble of running into them in your machine. And you're going to sew again on that same fold that we just folded. Now we're going to stitch along that fold. Let's keep following that line all the way to the end because it's each time it's covering over the piece from the first round. Now once again, remove the pins, and you just keep going round and round. So you can see going back and forth to the iron, uh, it would be easier if I had six of these all lined up and I'm doing the same piece every single time because I don't have to rethink it each time I go around. But I'm going to press this. That was piece number five. So next we're looking for number six. So here is the fold for number six, the line that's just before the six. That's where I'm going to put my card right along that line. And you see how that line doesn't stop at the stitching, it continues all the way past here to the number four there. I'm going to fold along this number six line. Here again, some of that stitching is holding the paper. Just kind of give it a little bit of a yank to bring it back down into place. Take your add a quarter ruler, line it up, so you would just keep going round and round. You see it's all straight line sewing, you don't need to worry, and you keep filling up those spaces until the last ones. Each time that we've come around this, we've added three pieces. The first one was the triangle, then we added three of those greens, three of the teals, three of these, three of these, and now all of a sudden we're at the end, and I only have two of those on there. There's a grayed area of your piece that is going to be used later. We're not doing that. That's another clue that is down the line. So for now, all you need to do is just finish all six of them by next month. That's not so hard. Just sit down one day and do it assembly line one at a time. But now I want to take a break and show you about sewing it by hand, if you'd rather do it by hand. So we moved the sewing machine out of the picture for the moment and going to talk about if you 
really don't like foundation piecing or sewing by the machine, um, you can do this just as easily by hand, just the same way as you could do a log cabin by hand. In the pages that you've downloaded, you have a page of templates and it actually says on there the, the F2 to F6 are only used if you choose not to do foundation piecing. These are the same what ends up being the pieces in your foundation. Now here's the same blocks that I've made but now done with hand piecing. So you just typically start the same way we did with the uh, foundation. You take your first piece but now everything is cut to the template. I will say that if you do template piecing as opposed to foundation, foundation piecing takes probably pretty much twice as much fabric because there is a lot of fabric waste from the trimming. Um, so if you're very frugal and you don't want to waste the fabric, I would suggest that you go ahead and do your uh, do it by hand. Once again, you've got all the dots that you want to mark the dots, then these are various odd angles, so you're not going to use the piece or you'll use a hole punch or burn through the holes, uh, however you want to do, the, do those, but it's important to line those up. So basically you just keep adding the pieces, all straight line sewing like we did before, and if you look here at the foundation pieced block, which we did here, and here's the hand pieced block, um, we have that one piece that's going to be yet to be added at some point, but there, there you are. They are the same. I mean, it's not like it's a magic secret. You do, if you're afraid of getting sharp points, um, you know, you may prefer the foundation because you do always get that. But you can do the same thing. As long as you match up the dots, you get the same thing uh, in the hand piecing. So depending on whether you want to sit at home on your sewing machine or whether you want to sit out by the pool, <laughs> Am I, is my prejudice showing through? No. Um, some people just prefer hand piecing, some people prefer machine piecing, and um, I like to show you the both options, and that's why we've included the templates. It is kind of tedious to copy all these templates by hand, you know, from your printout on the computer. So getting them pre-printed or getting our um, template film and printing them yourself off your laser printer, that's a really good way to go. Uh, I still do like to do the pressing uh, with my new favorite wool mat uh, when I'm pressing these. So I typically would sew again like assembly line fashion. So the same piece on four or five times if I'm home and then uh, press them all at one time before I add the next piece. Or um, do the finger pressing or the pressing with a pen like I showed you to kind of press them each time you go. So. If you choose to hand piece the pieces, uh, you do use a different thread. I think I mentioned the thread earlier in one of the previous clues, but I like the Aurifil thread. I like the 28 for hand piecing. This is the orange spool and that's a 50 weight and uh, that is what I used on the sewing machine in both the bobbin and the top for doing those foundations by machine. So I like one or the other depending on which technique you're doing. One reason I like the heavier thread for hand quilting, it has a less tendency to knot as you're sewing. You know, sometimes you get those knots. Uh, it's sturdier. Uh, I just find it doesn't break as easily. It's more, it's stronger as you're pulling that thread through over and over again. So many reasons why I like that for hand piecing, and all machine piecers swear by the 50 weight for doing the standard machine work. So have fun finishing these six foundations. Next month is going to be relatively easy, so um, you'll have an easier, a little bit of a less work next time than this time. But until then, I'll see you and happy quilting.